Hey, I've got something new you're going to love. If you do curved shears, then you need this Nanawa Arcone. Something new. We've had Arcones before, but never one like this. So let me show you how they're used and why I love them. If you're new to my channel or you're new to my website, I'm Bonnie McGowan, company's Benika Shears. I've been sharpening over 30 years and I love to share what I've learned and let you sharpen along with me and see what we can learn together. And um, curved shears have always been a nemesis for me and for most people I know that sharpen them. As, uh, I'm going to give a little bit of information about rod lines and curved shears, and that will help you if you're new to this. If not, you might want to skip through, and I'll show you about how these work. Um, curved shears, when they're in the factory, and I've got two here to sharpen today, and these are inexpensive ones, but you can see how they're basically, um, you know, except for the length, they're basically the same shear. In the factory, they make this one straight then after they make it then they curve it so you can't go back and sharpen it in the same way they sharpen it in the factory so that's the number one problem with curved shears if they have a ride line there's not a way to do it let me explain about ride lines if you don't know about ride lines let me show this one up close this is a shear Let's come down here so we can look at this together. Now here's a curved texturizer. It's not one of our shears. This is one uh, cheap one that I bought online for show and tell. But it it's, might be easy to see that shiny line right down here. Do you see the little shiny line? That's called the ride line. And typically if the shear is made correctly, it's going to go from the tip all the way down and make a backwards J. That's going to be on your quality shears. Now on these cheap ones, we're not really seeing a rod line. It's because the difference is this one has more of a hollow to it. This is more flat. So let me explain about this hollow. And I find a lot of sharpeners have no clue on this. And, and, you know, and I didn't for many years. I didn't understand this. I just knew that when you were working the ride line, you would put your pressure over the pivot hole, but no one really explained to me why, and no one explained why the ride line, or home line, some people call it, is on the cutting edge and not on the back edge. And, uh, you know, I've heard some people say there's a twist to the shears. Well, there is a twist, but the twist is not created in the way you would think. The angle of the edge all the way down is going to be the same in every shear that I've encountered. This hollow, and when I turn it back and forth to the light, can you see how the light reflection goes at a, like an angle? It's not going straight from here to there, but there's an angle to the light. And what that means is when the hollow was put in, and I'm going to pretend like this um, plate is what's creating the hollow. The hollow does not go from the back straight to the tip. It goes at an angle. I'm going to do that again so you can see what I'm talking about. Instead of going directly down, it's going at an angle. Now that angle will vary from one factory to the other. In fact, I know one factory that sort of changes the angle as it goes down or something. It's a, but it, it's, that's one of the secrets between some... Um, factories and others. That's also the reason why we get, maybe it might be the same steel, but we might get two shears from two different countries or two different factories. One will cut really nice and one won't, and it has to do a lot with how that hollow is put in. Now because of that, that puts a twist in the shear so that if this is laying on something flat, the only place that touches is right around here in that backwards J. Does that make sense? So, because of that, if I had a flat stone and I was laying it flat on a shear, 
it might feel flat to me, but the rod line, that little skinny line, would not be flat. It would be up. That's why, and I'll be getting into this in a minute, you're going to see I have some, it's just electrical tape. I'm just, I'll pull it off here so you can see what I've got. And this electrical tape allows me to have a little bit of height. See, if I were to do the rod line with this stone, I would have a little bit of height. Now, it's not going to be exact because that blade actually starts flat and has a little bit of twist to it because of the way the hollow is put in. But it's going to be closer to being correct, having this tape to lift it up a little bit. Does that make sense? Now, if you're good at using these type of things, you're not going to necessarily need the tape. You'll just feel it coming down here. But this area here needs to be flat. And this allows you to do the ride line. Now, this is not the best way to do a ride line on a flat shear. You can use the water stones. And I've got a lot of uh, videos on using water stones. But if you've got a curved shear, da -da -da -da, you can't use it on the water stone. Now, the beauty of these stones, and I'm going to pull two of them out here. I have them in three different grit. They're green, yellow, and red. The green is going to be pretty aggressive. This would be like if you had a shear that the ride line was gone or something you need to really work aggressively. These are made in Japan, but they recommend them for like the little trimmers for the bonsai trees. And this would be a, an aggressive one. If you had deep nicks or something like that, you might use this one. Um, it would be good to have the set because you never know what you need. This would be the next stop. This is a thousand grit on my lower end shears or ones with um, neat nicks um, for groomers. This is probably what I would use. This is a thousand grit and it's red. And it says right here, 1000 grit. And then this, the yellow one, the gold, is the one I would probably use the most. And it's 3,000 grit. I would probably have at least these two, if not all three. Now, I've got here the red and the gold. And I'm going to show you how we use them on the curved shears. Now, in the past, we had an arc hone that was teeny tiny. Let me get mine. There's mine. And if you have this, this works well. But I like the new Nanowa arc hones for a couple of reasons. Um, number one, the, the curve is a little bit more consistent because this is done in the factory where we have these done after, um, afterwards. Also, not only do you have the contour and the curve here, but looky here, that's concave. Now, why do you need concave? Because, look at this blade. So we would have this side on that side of the shear and then the curved one on that side and then you still have flat here and here if you need it. I also like the bigger size with my arthritis and with my hands it's 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 a little bit easier to deal with. You've got more stone here to work with. This is going to last you longer than the small stones. Now, the way I use them, and we're going to go through, and I've got a curved shear here. I'm going to do the inside um, for you so you can watch. Is I would prepare my stones by putting them in water. So I'm just going to drop them in here so they'll be ready. So I get a lot of these shears in, mostly from, it's a black... Um, African-American barber shop. They use this for the afros. They might cut this way. They might cut that way. They might come around the beard. Um, and they are what they are. They don't have a bumper. They don't have much of a hollow. They're adjusted pretty close. I could take them apart to sharpen them, but I'm going to run into all kinds of problems if I do. I'm just going to work with them as they are. So I'm going to clean them with alcohol. And these have a tiny ride line, or should have a tiny ride line for them. Um, I'm going to color them in with a red Sharpie so you can see what I'm doing here. So you can go about this either way. Now, 
I have the gold and the red. They're in soak. And when I use the red, which is the coarser one, I can, in doing this blade, come across like this. And it's just really the weight of the stone that is creating my ride here. Or, this may be easier for you, you can set this down. And you notice the back of my blade is on the tape. And I'm going to just bring it just light pressure following that stone. And that's the way to create the rod line on the side that curves <laughs> curves up. Then you have the curve here. And once again, if I want to, I can lay it here. And you just do what is comfortable for you. I can lay it on on my stone, on, on my arc cone, and pull it across. And you may need to put this at the edge of the table so that you've got room to curve it, especially if you've got an extreme curve. So I'm leaving this open. And I'm bringing it. Make sure your tip's there. Or you may find it easier to lay this down and then come in and I, I might do a little bit of movement like this. This may, you know, it, it, it just, it's your own preference how you like to do this because doing it this way you can see when you've removed the red. Now I might go from this, or my 1000 grit stone to my 3000 grit stone just to make it a little bit smoother. And basically, it's the pressure of the weight of the stone is all I'm putting on here. I'm not trying to grind this down. So I've created what I like, a nice ride line on both sides of this curve shear. If I were to take this apart, let's pretend like this is a curve shear. If I were to take this apart, then I would come in here on the flat side and work this area because that area is flat on the curved shear or straight shear. And I would work this area in here and then do the rest of it once again with this. And you may find a multitude of other uses for your arc hones because sometimes I'll get an inexpensive shear. Well, you know, like this one. Uh, let's clean this off with some alcohol. And I don't want to take it apart. It's a little cheap scissor. Um, the ride line is basically gone um, from the last sharpening, what little ride line it had. And I can create a ride, or at least a smoothness on the inside, if it's not an actual genuine ride, with this stone here by using just the flat side. Uh, let me make sure it's nice and wet dip it in the water and and this is going to give you a much smoother ride than some of the ceramic stones that we have out there because this is just it's a well-made Japanese water stone uh, you can kind of see some of the stone coming off here it's just a well-made water stone This blade is probably a little bit out of alignment. You might need to lift it a little bit. And then I would go on to my 
gold stone, which is 3,000 grit. Shine it up a little bit more. And then, of course, I would go to the outside of my blade and sharpen that next and, and finish them up. But this is going to give you a much smoother feel to your shears than, um, you know, maybe things that you've been using previously. That's how to use the new arc hones. If you come up with some other uses for them or other methods, please let me know. Because um, uh, these are new and I'm excited about using them. You can just feel the difference in the quality and the smoothness over other, you know, um, just general ceramic stones. Because these are Nanawa, Japanese Gokin. Not only is the material, the water stone coming from Japan, but also the perfection and the quality of the workmanship in giving you the concave and the convex shape and the flatness. Now, let's say you've been using them a while and you need to flatten them. Let's talk about how to do that. The 220 grit is pretty aggressive. It's pretty rough. Um, I wouldn't, I don't know of any shears I would want to use this on, but where the beauty of this is, is I'm going to use this, and I would, I would get them both wet first, both stones. But when you need to flatten your stones, this is ideal. Because I can work this side, and I can work the top side. Beautiful, huh? And I would probably work it a little bit more and try to get all that off. And then on the inside, let me get these wet good. On the concave side, you put the convex to the concave and do a little rocking motion here. And that's how I would keep your stones in good shape and keep them flat. So I might need a little bit more. So my recommendation is to get the three stones set so that you have something to flat and, and shape the other stones with it. And you have one that's a little bit more aggressive um, on my cheaper scissors, I'm using that, and then you have the, and maybe I'll go to the fine afterwards, and then um, you have something a little bit more of a finesse, a smoother feel. But I'm excited, excited, excited about the new arc hones. Um, just notice the size of them. They're five ounces each, and so much more than the little bitty thing we used to use. Just a lot more in your hand, easier to work with. Now, all these can be purchased on our website, so take a look at these and other things on our website, and um, make sure you subscribe. We've got a lot of sharpening videos and a lot of you know new things coming out. I, I didn't know these existed up till a couple of weeks ago. So um, enjoy, enjoy the sharpening.